Hello. This session will be about how to use Stellarium to find a retrograde motion loop of Mars. So we're starting out with a basic screen. Then we go down to the bottom left, clicking on the little arrows there, pin our menu bars in place, enable the constellations, Enable the constellation labels, constellation boundaries, and the equatorial grid. Now for the retrograde motion lab of Mars, we don't actually need the celestial horizon or the celestial poles or the celestial equator or the ecliptic. So we don't have to enable any of those to keep our screen more clear. But we definitely want to get rid of the Earth and of the atmosphere. On the day that I'm recording this, it's February 7th, 2021. Now the last retrograde motion loop or zigzag, sometimes it shows up as a zigzag rather than a loop, that was just at the end of 2020. There are about two years and two months between the start of one retrograde motion loop and the next. If I want to look for the next retrograde motion, then I should probably start looking towards the end of 2022 and beginning of 2023. And there won't be any loop or zigzag in all of 2021. The way we're looking for the retrograde motion loop, we're going to go to the menu on the left. Click on the astronomical calculations window. Then we go to ephemeris. If it's not already selected, we want to click on Mars because we want to look at how the position of Mars changes over the days and months. The ephemeris is going to calculate how the positions of the selected object changes based on the dates we select and the coordinate system we select and all those kinds of things. So here we can select to show the markers, which are just position markers. We could also click on showing the dates. We can do that a little bit later, but depending on how frequent we set the markers, seeing all the dates in addition to that, that might clutter things up a little bit. We don't have to show the magnitudes. This would be the, the visual magnitudes. Again, that's information we don't need for this lab, or we can get in a different way, so we don't want to clutter up the screen with all that. One thing that's important we want to make sure that we do not click horizontal coordinates. We are interested in the position of the object in the celestial sphere. That is given by right ascension and declination, which is the equatorial grid. So you want to make sure that horizontal coordinates not selected. If you're doing this in a Mac, there will be an abbreviation HC that should not be selected and you want to make sure that you read right ascension and declination. We said we wanted to start, so here's the start date. So from, let's say, September 2022, September 1st, we can always go back and change the dates to make the loop appear a little bit more clear. Let's say the two date, let's make it April 2023. It will full state. We can also select the time step. We will get one position marker every five solar days. We could go shorter and say every day or even every 10 minutes. So it's going to be very closely spaced. If we go every 10 days, the motion will not be plotted as fine grained. So we'll stick with five days. And if we don't like that spacing, we can always go back and change it later. OK, so we'll stick with that. Click on Calculate Ephemeris. Here we see all the positions plotted. In order to find the retrograde motion loop or the retrograde motion zigzag, I can just click and drag to move the celestial sphere 
until I see the plotted path. Okay, here it is. Let me get this a little bit closer into view. Okay, and I've clicked on the first date in my table, which was September 1st, 2022. I can actually see that this is highlighted here. So this would be the first position and then September 6th, the second position and so on. So I could click through here. So this is still the prograde motion of Mars. And as I scroll down, Mars will continue to move prograde and slower and slower until it turns around and starts going retrograde. So for this path here, for this section, it would go retrograde. See, I can just click through the days. You can see how it slows down because the days are taken every five days. And then now it moves in the opposite direction. Okay. Okay. This is what the retrograde motion of Mars looks like. You want to catch prograde, prograde, and then when it turns around and goes retrograde, and then when it turns back around and goes prograde again. Now, what you want to enter into the table is the starting date, not our from date, from when we started calculating our positions, but the first date that it actually moves in the retrograde direction. We can narrow that down by, let's just click again, see if we can find one of those dates here. And then to find the best possible point, we can also watch what happens with the right ascension. While Mars goes in the prograde direction, you see that the right ascension is increasing. So we have five hours and nine minutes, then five hours and 16 and so on and so on. And if we keep going, we have five hours, 33 minutes, five hours, 37 minutes, 39, 39. And you see that that is actually the point right here. And here from October 31st, which happens to be Halloween, to November 5th, it has turned around and moves now in the opposite direction. So you want to put largest right ascension before it turns around. The values become smaller again. The first row would be Halloween. Um, the date would be October 31st, 2022. And then you would write down the right ascension, which was 5 hours, 39 minutes, say 22 seconds. Write down the declination, which is 23 degrees, 50 arc minutes, and 59 arc seconds. The only other thing you need to write down would be the elongation, which is how far away it is from the Earth, the angle in the sky, with respect to the Sun. So that's 132 degrees, 46 arc minutes, 21 arc seconds. The next row in table one would be the middle of the retrograde motion. This time we look at the elongation. When Mars reaches maximum elongation, then it has reached the middle of the retrograde motion. Yeah, the furthest point away from the sun in terms of an angle with respect to Earth. Okay, and you can see as we move down, um, see, 169, it's still increasing, 175 degrees. Yeah, it's going to go back a little bit smaller. You would select for your table this state where Mars reaches an elongation of 175 degrees. That would be on December 5th, 2022. And you would write down the right ascension of 5 hours and 1 minute, 16 seconds. Declination, 24 degrees, 57 arc minutes, and 30 arc seconds. And then, of course, the elongation of 175 degrees, 58 arc minutes, and 47 arc seconds. Now, after that, you see that the elongation decreases again. So Mars still moves retrograde, but it's slowing down because it's getting ready to turn around and move prograde again. 
And when it changes direction, we'll see that in the right ascension. So let's put it that way. While Mars was moving retrograde, its right ascension was decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So when it turns around and moves prograde again, we expect the right ascension to start increasing again. So we scroll further down, look at our right ascension, and right around here, it keeps decreasing, but then 4 hours 22 minutes, 4 hours 23 minutes, here it is starting to increase again. And if you look at highlighting our dots, this is right around here. It's kind of hard to see because the points sort of fall on top of each other. That's why it's good if you look at the table. So here's the first state where it goes prograde again. So this was the last state where it was in retrograde. Write down this last retrograde date, which was January 14th, 2023. It was at a right ascension of 4 hours and 22 minutes, 13 seconds, and a declination of 24 degrees, 24 arc minutes, and 16 arc seconds. And the elongation was 133 degrees, 42 arc minutes, and 42 arc seconds. You can see the right ascension is decreasing, uh, sorry, is increasing again. And then it will increase, increase, increase until about two years and two months later for the next retrograde zigzag or loop, which would be what you put in table two around two years and two months later for the next retrograde motion, which would occur, well, 2023, so that would be 2025. For table three would be the retrograde motion after that. If we're like in 2025, then two years and two months later would put us somewhere into 2027. I want you, of course, to take your own data. If you start at a different date, then you wind up with your retrograde starting and retrograde ending and retrograde midpoint, maybe at a slightly different date, not exactly the same dates as I picked for my table, but they will be very similar, you know, within one or two days. And you might even get a little bit higher with your maximum elongation value. The maximum possible elongation would actually be 180 degrees. So if you put every one day, but then you would get lots, lots and lots and lots, many more rows of data to go through. So that, that becomes a little bit unwieldy then. But again, um, if you don't see the loop at all or the zigzag, um, so if you have picked a year where there is no retrograde motion, just pick the next year, the following year of, of dates and see if you can get it to show up then. You only get a loop or zigzag every other year. If you have any more questions, feel free to send me an email or your instructor, whoever will be teaching the course, and we will be happy to talk you through, either in an email exchange or in WebEx. We're always looking forward to meet you. Bye.